Hello, welcome to the party. Hi, I've never met you before. I know. Just two guys and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Having a good time. Just two guys and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Welcome back to Just Two Guys. Uh, tonight's going to be kind of an unplugged version. Kind of unplugged. That's what the yeah, term I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. It's very unplugged, and it's very, yeah. it's very getting back to what Just Two yeah. Guys is. It's intimate. But yeah, we. It's very intimate. We don't have to interview anybody. We get to talk about what we want. We're going to talk about some guilt-free '80s films later on in the show. Yeah. We're going to start off by drinking uh, some. An Illinois beer and an Illinois wine. In fact, yeah. if you want to start off by telling what, what beer you chose. Uh, well, I didn't have a lot of time to go out and <laughs> get a well. beer, but I got uh, the Goose Island Honkers Ale. It's great Illinois beer. Made in Chicago, and it's pretty good. I like to drink it regularly. Yeah. And I wanted to get their summer, but when I got to the store, they were out. So Cold beer is summer. Yeah, it is. It's, it's such right. a light. It's got such a light. Refreshing flavor, I think. Yeah, I love yeah. drinking it. So. Yeah, and I and I brought a, a local wine from uh, Culver Family Winery, the Red Rooster. It's a good dinner wine. Uh, it's out of Barry, Illinois. We've apparently both had it before, and yeah. it's a pretty good wine. So I will uh, uh, pour you a bit okay. of that. While you're doing that, I tell you that we went to a party uh, a couple of weekends ago, and while we were there, a five-year-old boy stole a bunch of our beer. Uh huh. Um, because he wanted to collect the bottle caps. So when we got home, we realized all of the beer in our cooler had been removed, um, but we didn't drink all of it. Really? Yeah, so I think he took them out and poured them out so that he could c collect the bottle caps. That's not very cool. He was a strange little boy. That's not very cool. That's why boys shouldn't have beer around them, because they always yeah. end up stealing it. Or... Like, like us. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. So This is the Red Rooster? This is the Red Rooster. Very nice. Good dinner. Oh wine. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's on the sweeter side. It's a semi-sweet, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect just after a good steak. Oh yeah. Really good. Yeah, yeah. So that you want to get started hungry. on the uh, sure. questions? Sure. Uh, I guess I will start with. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, what class in college did you hate the most? Um, hated the most. You, you won't believe this. This is the irony of ironies. Broadcasting television. Really? Yeah, I hated the television class. I hated that backroom editing stuff because it wasn't the digital computer stuff yeah. that you have now where you just drag and click. Back in your day. Back in my day when I was in college, uh, when I was actually a broadcasting major, uh, they you had to have two you know screens and two like mm -hmm. tape machines and you had to like switch them I, it was horrible that's what got me out of broadcasting wow yeah that's yeah. unfortunate it was and I didn't know how to run the cameras I it was awful. well you've made your return to broadcasting this is just the beginning I'm back yeah <laughs> you're back in a heavy way my back friend. in a heavy way okay back in the 1980s and my questions are all 1980s things oh, okay since we since we're going to do the 80s stuff here. In the Cola Wars of the 1980s, which side did you take and why? Oh, I took the Coke side. Did you? I've always been a Coke man. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, we stood on different sides of the battlefield then. We did. There was something about the imagery to me of Coca-Cola. Uh, I think I saw some old photographs when I was a kid of like the 1950s and men in white t-shirts slugging back Coca-Colas and I just thought, that's what I want to be part of. <laughs> And so I've always been a Coke person. I like the way it burns. It does mouth. have a good burn. I like that. It does have and a good burn. I've always been a Coke person. My 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 Pepsi love is really for the diet. It's the the regular I could give or take. Really, yeah. I could go for Coke, but my diet Pepsi love is really. Yeah, it's kind of like the uh, you know, and there's Axis and Allies. It's kind of like the Italy. It's not quite the Germany. It's <laughs> yeah, more I can the see that. Yeah. <laughs> now you know, don't even get me started on the whole new Coke conspiracy theories, because I'm a bit of a nut Makes me case. Want to drink. I know. That's a bad one. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, Hollywood wants to make a buddy cop picture starring Clint Eastwood mm -hmm. as a veteran detective, as usual. Okay. 
and Natalie Portman as a former television actress who joins the police force after the grisly murder of her brother. The two join forces to take down an organized crime ring. What would be the title of this picture? Um, I would say the bullet hole. The bullet hole. Yeah, because it's going to have that mystery to the, the. That's really where the mystery is yeah, surrounding. Nice. The, it's, that's all they have, is it? It's is driving, it? yeah, it's driving yeah. the plot. So just give me like the last scene. What would happen? How would the whole story unravel? Um, well, um, it would be uh, Natalie Portman's um, boyfriend was really behind this mess. Oh. Yeah. Uh, she didn't know that her mob boyfriend was behind the whole thing. Had absolutely no idea. Had absolutely no idea. Typical. Yeah, and i um, trying to think of who would play that part. Probably Vin Diesel or something. Yeah. Just to throw in some random, random actor. On the rebound. <laughs> yeah, on the rebound yeah. actor. <laughs> That's a good, I think he would make a good Natalie Portman boyfriend in a crap movie. I think so like too. That. It's a cop movie. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? All right. This, which sitcom family of the 80s would you rather belong to? I'm going to give you five families. Usually it's three, but I'm going to give you five. Okay. Because there's quite a bit to pick from. The Keatons from Family Ties. The Huxtables from The Cosby Show. The Tanners from ALF. The Hogan Family from mm -hmm. The Hogan Family. Or the Seavers from Growing Pains. Uh, you gave so me Family the, Ties, right? You'd be the extra brother. You'd be the, you'd be the brother that... Okay. Doesn't appear very often. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they wrote him in in season six. The Chuck from yeah, Happy Days. Yeah, exactly. He just randomly shows up one day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I'd go with Family Ties. That was an option, right? I, yeah, that was the first option. Um, whoever it is from the ALF show, I couldn't stand that family. I thought they were I'm glad horrible. you said that. Um, also, if I really had my choice of TV families, though, I have to say I would go with the Walton family. Is that really where you want to? I love that show. Sit down. On? That's I love that the show. Waltons. The mountain living, the peaceful. You kind of are John Boy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, you know, I'm not, it's not yeah. an insult. No, no, I don't take. Good night, John such. Boy. Good night, Micah. <laughs> uh, what would be your dream job? Um, if you could do anything in the world. No honestly, limits. honestly, I swear to you, it would be doing this and getting paid for it. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. That would just be fun. You know, I, we're, you know, prepare five shows a week and just do it. That would be awesome. Yeah. If you're out there and you're listening. Give it to us, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be a cool job. It would just, it would just be, it'd be, I mean, there'd be some stress involved, I'm sure, because our ideas would really. I really would like to see the docudrama that was made about that, sit, that time in our lives. It would be crazy. Crazy parties and all oh, these yeah. TV groupies. Oh, yeah. There'd be pictures of me passed out in an alley. Yeah. Yeah. People would be like, oh, yeah, we love that show. Yeah, like, get out of my face. Yeah. The problem is they'd pick up our show and then replace us with actual... Tony Danza? People. Yeah, Tony Danza. <laughs> He's back. Mm hmm All right, let's see. Do you think the decade that we are currently in will create some, side, some type of pop culture love as the 80s provided for us 20 years mm. ago? You know what I mean? You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? I hate to say never. Um, and maybe I'm just kind of out of touch with popular culture mm -hmm. nowadays, but there's not a lot that is really that appealing to me. I feel like everything is so celebrity-centered now. Yo. That there, yeah. aren't, there aren't a lot of trends. It's more of just an obsession with individual people. Right. So, well, so, would, so is that, what do you think this, is, this decade is going to be defined as 20 years from now is the the dead Maybe. girls used to party. <laughs> Maybe. I assume that's true. You know, the 80s, it was kind of like the, I don't know, Hollywood lifestyle and um, well, the yuppie core, culture. The Corys had some. Yeah, the Corys, which they're back. But, um, oh yeah, I think that now we're going to look back at, at some point and say, well, we were so obsessed with celebrity back then. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we we'll just continue shows? to be obsessed with Do that. you think yeah. reality shows will be minutes of fame. looked upon as that's, like... That's Horrible. this decade, 15 minutes. Because they're so, yeah, it, because it, it's, it's so just, it's almost like people writing scripts for real people now. Yeah. It's awful. It is awful. It's awful. So. Yeah, so if you're interested in uh, hiring us for a reality show, we would be happy to do that. No, just, yeah, I don't mind. Uh, okay. How do you fold your t-shirts at home? Do you fold them like they do in the stores? Quickly. 
I <laughs> fold them quickly. You fold them quickly. Yes. Well, one of my options was going to be, the, do you leave them crumpled in your laundry basket? No. Oh, that's I actually I do, do fold them and put them in a drawer oh, next wow. to my boxer shorts. Ooh, now we're getting some intimate details. Just wanted to let you know. All right, let's get on to our uh, movie here. We'll be right back. Hello. Uh, we're going to keep talking now about movies and some other things that we liked about the 80s. Uh, do, you, do you want me to take this, Johnny, if you're a little <laughs> No, I'm just playing around. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we wanted to do a show about movies again and talking about movies, but we didn't want to do kind of the obvious choices. Right. So we decided that we would make a list of movies that we could choose freely without guilt. Yes. I didn't want to feel like... I would judge you about some right. horrible movie you picked. Guilt-free so, 80s films. Although you did make me, make me feel really bad when I chose the Care Bears movie. Why? I... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you would have picked that, I would have gone with it. <laughs> I've never even seen that. I haven't either. You, I... Uh, so we're going to start with 9 to 5. Yes, yes. Uh, that in, was your pick. That was yeah, your pick. In my opinion, 9 to 5 was sort of the whole beginning of the workplace comedy where you know it's the working people rise up against their bosses yeah and what i think is interesting about this movie right now in my life is that i just put this thing on the blog about uh poll polling what qualities do, does your boss currently have yeah. and i think it's interesting one of the lines in that movie is that he's a sexist egotistical lying hypocritical bigot yeah and that kind of summarizes and i think that movie also drew light on a fading boss Right. Characterization. Well, I think that was I think that was kind of maybe maybe the point. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what they're really going for, but yeah, definitely during the early '80s, we were really getting in the corporate world and the yeah. glamorizing the corporate world. But in order to do that, we had to also shine this this old notion of these old men who ran these companies and the, the women were supposed to be secretaries and yeah. you know the, it was it kind of took that and tried to break it down. And I loved Dabney Coleman, I know. Coleman, though. I mean, he was just great. He, he was such a cretin. <laughs> loved it. Loved it. He played you such know, a great part. Something else I like about that movie a lot is that, you know, Office Space is a movie that everybody throws around as being kind of this great movie. It's okay. But there's something about the way the plot unfolds that just seems kind of corny to me. And I don't right. know why that is. It's a, it's a good movie, but it's yeah. corny. Nine to Five, I think there's something about this set of circumstances that sets this whole overthrow in place that's hilarious. It is. It's, it's hilarious. And it's so different, I think, than what comes later. And it takes such later. a strange turn with the rat poison. Yeah. It's such an that odd... That happens so quickly. Yeah, it happens so quickly. You're like, wait, they just did that? Yeah, and before you know it, they have him tied up <laughs> yeah, out in his mansion. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, great. it's yeah. great. It's great. It's great. I, I also, I read today that they, there are talks that they may film a sequel. I've, I read that as well. That would be I think uh, Dolly strange. Parton and Jane Fonda yeah, they're all and Louis Tomlin are really... And Dabney Coleman, he's still around. Apparently he just attended Dave Matthews' 40th birthday. I don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> I well, was reading an article of Dave Matthews and he said Dabney Coleman showed, Coleman showed up and I just... When I think of Dave Matthews, I always think of Dabney Coleman. That's, 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 that's the why. first choice. Yeah. That's always the first choice. Well, I will go on to uh, my first pick, which is St. Elmo's Fire. Oh, okay. Uh, an interesting mid '80s um, pick, which it I can I can admit right now it's not the greatest film from the decade. It was not a great film, but w it really uh, defined many of the '80s characteristics. It was definitely a brat back movie. Yeah. Uh, w but they were playing older characters j right. just out of college, dealing with moving on past their old lives, and, and every character had that issue they all had to get past something right uh like uh you know kirby played by emilio F estevez his Ill inability to let go of the past with the future with this, this girlfriend played by Anna mcdowell he went on one date with her and he couldn't get over her mm -hmm. but finally he does end up moving on right well and that's what i like about this movie so much is this thematic uh, when i was looking through this list i think we have the same notes uh -huh. was that so many of these things it, we've all gone through you know, trying to right. translate to the real world. These are basically 23-year-olds trying to figure out how to move from college to yeah. the real world, and they just get 
just they flattened by the real world. They're just they're not ready to handle it yet. Yeah. And yet they're they're having to do it and they're going through tough times. I one of the funny lines uh, from from um, Rob Lowe who who got a Razzie that year. Yeah, for I know, his, for, for you know so. which I don't understand. I think it was a great character. He was he was always drinking and getting in trouble and screwing up. He had a wife, a, a girlfriend, baby, everything. He in the beginning he gets in an accident uh, and. Uh, uh, Alec, the, the character Judd Nelson played, who's playing uh, political one, he said, oh, yeah. uh, you're being arrested for drunk driving. And Billy said, who's Rob Lowe, he said, drunk definitely? I don't know if you can call it driving, <laughs> which is just perfect. Like, yeah. it was set his character right, right yeah. in motion. We knew this guy was a total screw up. Right, and that happens really early on, right? Yeah, the real early scene. on. It was like the first scene. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and the, in the end, he comes up with this great speech about how we're all going through this, and we're just going to we're going to get through it. Yeah, and I think that movie's strong for its themes. I, it's not necessarily a well-written plot, I right. guess, but the themes are there. Plus, uh, there was something about oh, the Razzie. I was thinking about if Rob Lowe deserved a Razzie for anything, it was about last night mm -hmm. with Demi Moore. Terrible. That was that was awful. Yeah, that was awful. And I have to say also that I really don't like Andy McDowell. No. Uh, and her part was small enough. I'm not sure why she was actually in it. Just, just because character. she's Andy McDowell. I guess. I guess. She's but the devil's. I just liked everybody, all the characters. Yeah, yeah. You know, in it. it was it was really good. And I do like the the whole notion of Saint Elmo's fire. And I read the quote from the movie about you know what Saint Elmo's fire is, and they you know that sailors were using this thing to guide themselves, mm -hmm. and that's what we all do. Yeah. We all give ourselves reasons to guide our lives forward. Yeah. And yeah. And they're all. And he, he said, but it's not real. Yeah. Exactly. It's not real. So. Yeah. That's that's thing that was fire. Yeah. Good times. What's next? Well, you want Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Yeah, that's one of my picks. Um, the Princess Bride, I think, is just a really great modern fairy tale. Um, it does such a great job of establishing these kind of stereotypical characters from fairy tale. And I think it does what I, it does well what I didn't like about Shrek. I think the Shrek movies kind of try too hard maybe to, yeah. the, the first Shrek movie I liked, the second one. Yeah, the, it started so to really, I didn't see the third one. So and I, I think know. the Princess Bride does a really good job effortlessly of kind yeah. of blending some of these fairy tale just, elements it's together. It's just, the humor in it is yeah. just amazing. And, and, I mean, say when the, when the film came out, it was uh, it made money, but it wasn't a huge hit. But it's become a huge cult yeah, classic definitely. since then. In fact, it's on the you know top 250 films on IMDb at this point. I mean, it's it's that huge. It's yeah, and it gets referenced quite a bit. Yes, the whole Inigo Montoya character. Oh yeah. I mean, everybody knows that. Yeah, line. you you know that everybody knows the line. You kill my father, prepare to die. Um, Andre the Giant, that yeah. great character. And that was Carrie Elwes' best movie. Oh, yeah. I loved him in that movie. I thought he would skyrocket. I did, too. I thought I, this guy this guy can act. He's He's got it down. He's a good-looking guy. And I thought, and my favorite actress, no kidding, Robin Wright. Oh, Robin you like Wright Robin Penn. Wright. I think she's just she's probably the best actress out there. Um, very low-key. You can yeah. rarely hear about her, but, I mean, she she can play her roles really well. Yeah, and she was good in that movie. Yeah. And uh, and another thing I, I didn't realize about this movie until I was researching it was a Rob Reiner film. Yeah, I know. I didn't and, realize and, and, that either. And that's why Christopher Guest, I assume, got into it because as we watched in the movie, right. film, Spinal Tap, directed by Rob Reiner, and had Christopher Guest. So yeah. I, I assume that connection was there. Yeah, I would think so. Because, yeah. um, and it has that Rob Reiner sensibility, sort of the humor. And I think that's yeah. what it is. It's a light touch to yeah. this humorous thing. Yeah, it, it was. Oh, I love that film. I do love too. That film. I really like the. Uh, Andre the Giant scenes. I think those are really interesting to me. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. And and, uh, and he seems like a fairy tale character. Yeah, There's he does. Giant he, it was like how they, they, they fit him into it perfectly and him on a yeah. horse. And, and they use him as an elevator at that one point and he's like dragging himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and good good bad guys too. Real good, yeah, real good, good evil guys. Oh, I can't think of that guy's name. The little guy who's really snively and they, they do the like the Poison taste oh, the, the ball guy. I can't remember, yeah, his, I can't name, remember his name. He's, he's a great character actor. Yeah. yeah, and it was a real funny scene where he, Billy Crystal's character. He like laughs right. and then he dies. Yeah, <laughs> he falls off that rock. Yeah. yeah, very funny. Oh, I love that. I, I could talk about that film forever. Um, my next film is Real Genius. 
Oh, yeah. 1985 film comedy starring Val Kilmer and Gabe Jarrett. Uh, we don't hear too many much about Gabe Jarrett anymore. He does appear a few times yeah. in little parts. But um, I just thought it was one of the funniest comedies of the 80s. It, it had that 80s theme. You know, now we have Geek Chic. Mm -hmm. But really, the 80s had that nerd chic. Oh, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, and, it was everything. Yeah. And this was actually a smart nerd comedy. I mean, these were, these were real geniuses. They were not yeah. just nerdy, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. like that. They, they were real smart people. And they, they, all their lines were real, you know, smart-ass right. type. And uh, this movie, I always pair this movie with uh, Weird Science. Yeah. But I like this movie a lot more than Weird yeah, Science. Yeah, I do too. Something about that movie I bothered me. I don't know if it, maybe it was the overt sexism. In yeah, that movie. I think I think that was probably part of it. But I, yeah, I like this movie a lot, and I love the pranks they play. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's the prank where they pretend that they're God, talking to that guy about how Kent. much he. Yeah, yeah. Kent, Kent was a funny character because yeah. uh, uh, definitely Chris Knight, the Val yeah. Kilmer. I thought that was Val Kilmer's best part that he's had. I mean, yeah. I, now, Heat was a great movie, but this was great. And there's some talk about. A sequel for this too. Yeah, Val Kilmer wants to do a sequel for this too. That would that, be that's, kind of strange. that would be a little odd. I don't. Yeah. But I'd like to see Val Kilmer get back into comedy because uh, he <laughs> he just his timing is yeah. so perfect. Yeah, in this it film. is. This movie he he is that jerk. Yeah. Smart guy who just can't but it, be bested. Another theme in, in this film, which is typical '80s, is the 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 overt Cold War type of. Um, military secrets. Yeah, the CIA's in the background. Because that laser, they're going yeah. to. They accidentally, they didn't realize they were developing this laser for the yeah. military, and so they have to come in and save the day and take that laser away because they're afraid it's going to be too. And dangerous. they use it to make popcorn, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And the, Professor Hathaway's new house. Yeah. Uh, who's exactly. allergic to popcorn? Right. So right. Their idea is to uh, make a big thing of popcorn, which I'm sure is completely impossible. Completely impossible. Uh, yeah, but sure. the film ends with popcorn filling out of his house with tears of fears. Well, playing. Yeah, and that movie also just does a good job of illustrating: don't throw yourself into your work too much because that's how he comes in really serious and then right. decides to back off a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, I I could watch that right. Yeah, now. that movie's good times. Um. Well, we're going to go into a movie we both love, uh, and I hope we can get into a second movie. It's a Tom Hanks film, The Burbs. Yeah. Uh, that, 1989, uh, Tom Hanks made a string of these 80s films that were light comedies, family comedies, uh, you know, Turner and Hooch, Big. Volunteers. Uh, yeah, Volunteers, and Joe versus Volcano. I have to say that I, I need to give a shout out to my wife because she's always been a huge fan of those Tom Hanks comedies. They're great. And when we first started hanging out talking about movies, I gave her a lot of grief about that. But I've since been converted to a big fan of these They're just older so Tom Hanks watchable. Movies. They're yeah, so they are. watchable. There's nothing about them that's offensive. They're just Right. There's something about volunteers that I think is boring. Yeah. But uh, she loves it, and yeah. so I, you know, I, I've seen it several times. But, but the Burbs is a great dark comedy. That, it that, is. That it's set in a in a suburban cul-de-sac setting, real quiet. Lawns are nice. Um, you know, the the one line from Carol, um, uh, she played by Carrie Fisher. She's when he sees that he's up watching a dog poop. She's like, yeah. "You were up at the crack of dawn watching a dog poop. You need to go on vacation." <laughs> you know, right. st stuff like that like, but that's what people associate people in the suburbs doing. Exactly. They, they don't do anything but cut grass and Yeah, and it takes that that idea of kind of the weirdness of a suburb and then it twists it into this really dark yes. comedy. And that's part of another thing that happens is if you are not familiar with a neighbor, you end up thinking uh, sinister right. things exactly. are going on in that house, and, and you and this is kind of plays on that. Yeah. And of course, it turns out sinister things are happening <laughs> right. in the house, and it's a real creepy. But it twists, and then it twists back. Yeah, it twists because then and you think, back. oh, these poor people have yeah, been. Yeah, these poor people, or they're they're yeah. being harassed by their neighbors, and, and I love that Bruce Dern character. Yeah, he's crazy. Uh, across the street. One of the that was one of the few Corey Feldman movies that I really liked him in yeah. and it made me feel like I wanted to grow up and live in a suburb <laughs> and be cool like <laughs> that's Corey what I, Yeah, that's what yeah. I wanted. I wanted to just just live in a suburb, having those the you know, nice looking neighbors and it just seemed like the weather was always perfect. Yeah. It was like perfect summer weather. They just had it down. Yeah. 
you know, and then it, it's it, a cool movie. Yeah, it was it was pretty much vacation time, but definitely the the best character was Art. Oh, definitely. Out, out of, and that's uh, Rick Ducommon. That's yeah. the, the guy. I want to see him in more. I don't know and why. And he, he sort of just disappeared off the radar. He was in Groundhog Day. Yeah. That's the last time I remember seeing him, and yeah. that was it. I don't know what what. I always happened thought he to was him. funny because I thought his name was interesting too. Like, what a weird name. Yeah, exactly. But he just played that good, annoying character yeah. who just showed up at your door, started eating all your food. He was always there. And he's always watching the neighbors, has all the big theories. And then once he wants Ray to go take care of all the problems. Which it kind of worries me because I think I'm that guy. I'd I'm like always to be like that guy. keeping an eye on the neighborhood to make sure everything is. Yeah, on but the you're up not. You're up. not quite crazy. You haven't started shooting at birds or. No, and I also haven't. I don't go to the neighbor's house and start eating their food. You know, I'm just quiet about it. I'm kind of like Mrs. Well, Kravitz. you've got you've got time to to get into yeah. that. So we have a few minutes left. You want to go to Joe versus yeah. the Volcano? Yeah, let's go to Joe versus the Volcano it's along the same, you know, another cult film. Yeah, you know, when I first saw this movie, I th thought it was kind of not very good. And then the more that I learned, it's one of these movies that after you watch it and then you start learning about it, you realize there's something really cool going on. Yeah. And I think what appeals to me about it is that it's this whole notion of the hero myth that the hero goes on this journey to a sort of a mysterious place and finds the truth, yes. finds whatever it is he's looking for, and he also, you know, has the it, the girl. It's kind of a different take on the fairy tale, yeah. in a way. Um, but it was a that was a it was a weird movie, yeah, because of the whole brain cloud thing. Yeah, it was definitely, um, yeah, it was definitely s a strange plot. I mean, the yeah. guy basically was just picked out of nowhere. Right. To sacrifice for these people, so for for a big corporate, you know, 80s theme, big right, corporate. Exactly. Even though this was released in 1990, right. we will say it was filmed in the 80s. It was ushering out the yeah, 80s. Yeah, it was film. ushering out the 80s, but it still had that, that corporate evil feel to it, you know, because everybody was worried about what right. corporate America was going to do. Um, and yeah, it was just such a strange, you know, brain cloud. You got to go to this yeah. volcano, and, and that he only really begins to live his life when he thinks he's going to die. Right. So, right. You know, because he lived at the beginning was great because he, the job he showed up at. I'd want to <laughs> jump in a volcano. Just him sitting there with those neon light. The, yeah. The, the, the and he had been a firefighter previously, right? And he was terrified of all this stuff. That, yeah, like, yeah. But he yeah. just sitting there and just the buzzing of the lights <laughs> in his office all day. It was, yeah. It was awful. But uh, and I don't know why, but every time I think of this movie, I drink an orange soda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you definitely, yeah. I'll have to get one on the way home. I know, because for some reason the orange soda, you know, was played a major part. Yeah. Again, why? I don't know, but it worked. It did work. It, it fits the whole... And the, the big whole... uh, the big suitcase, the big trunk. Yeah. Played a and huge part. And it saves part. them twice. Yeah, it saves yeah. them twice. Yeah. And Very Meg cool. Ryan, who was interesting, played multiple roles. Yeah, and every time he sees her, he says, I think I've seen you somewhere before. Yeah. I feel like I've already met you or yeah. something. Yeah, which is just another interesting thing yeah. to do. Well, so. I guess that's all we have time for. Hey, this was fun. This was fun. I want to do this again sometime soon, and uh, the drinks were great. And um, we will see you next time on Just Two Guys. Hello, welcome to the party. Hi, I've never met you before. I know. Just two guys and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Having a good time. Just two guys and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Having a good time.